Now, before I start, actually, I, I, ne I need to uh, get something out of my system. So uh, apparently, I'm the guy who's between you and that delicious tea break that's going to be happening in one hour. So uh, yeah, I, I wonder how that actually feels. Should I feel bad or should I feel good that it's so evil, you know? I can keep you like locked in here like for the next uh, hour or two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll try my best to finish on time or not. <laughs> okay, folks, so um, let's get started. So welcome. So this is going to be a session about the Skia shop and Samarin forms and how to handle 2D graphics uh, with these two. Now, um, my name is Udara. Now, before I actually jump into the presentation, I need to brag about myself a little bit, you know. You know, I, I don't really like to, you know, brag about myself, but I love it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is me. I'm Udar Alvis, and uh, apparently some people get my name wrong. It's U D A R A Udar. Yeah. So I'm a Samarin developer here in Singapore. I'm more of an enthusiast, where I always try to uh, push the limits of a framework and uh, play around with experimenting and stuff. And uh, I've got some mad love for mobile development since long time back. So, yeah. And uh, just like most of you guys out here. I'm a Samarin and uh, Microsoft fanboy, so yeah, there you go. Now, uh, I'm 25 years old, uh, and I'm not coding. I'm quite an uh, outdoor enthusiast, uh, adventurer, so yeah. And uh, also, I do a lot of tech blogging in Samarin, and uh, I quite often uh, ha uh, post about hacking around the Samarin framework and pushing the limits of it. And recently, I picked up Skiashop. And uh, I've been posting about some cool stuff that you can do with Skia Shop that you can't really find anywhere else. So you might want to check that out. Anyways, if any of you are interested, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm right there with Dara Alvis. You'll find me. Okay, so let's jump right into the, the, the journey that we are going to take in this session right here. So first of all, we are going to get into the graphics in mobile application, how it works and why is it important. And then we are going to get into the 2D graphics aspect of it and uh, what are the options that we have when it comes to Samarin forms and 2D graphics. Then we'll jump right into Skia Shop. We'll talk about a little bit of the roots of the project. And uh, we'll get into the developer stuff of Skia Shop, the basics and the, uh, you know, the know-how to get started with Skia Shop, right? And then we'll jump right into handling advanced stuff such as user interactions, uh, image manipulations, and uh, of course, the last, but the coolest, animations rendering with Skia Shop. So it's going to be a pretty cool session, guys. All right, so let's get started. Now, graphics in mobile applications, right? Now, imagine you build an app with all the default uh, buttons, labels, and controls, the visual elements that you get out of the box in any framework. You build in, in the apps that are built in such manner that though, though they might quite get uh, boring for the user uh, after a while, right? Because there's not much uh, user interaction or not much like interactivity or like elements of surprises for the user. So in that aspect, graphics and animations and stuff are really important when it comes to delivering a great UX user experience for your users, right? So, um, and as, the, as developers, as, as the aspect of a developer, I'm telling you, playing around with graphics rendering is super fun, trust me. It's really addictive once you get into it, when you see all those, the, your animation rendering code gets rendered on the mobile screen right in front of your eyes, that is beautiful. But until you have to debug a rendering process, that is not fun, that is so annoying, you'll, you'll, you'll find it someday. So anyways, uh, here we go, 2D graphics, folks. 
Now, 2D graphics, I know most of you guys are aware of this, it's quite basics, but just to set a common ground, uh, 2D graphics is all about the generation of two-dimensional visual elements on a 2D plane, right? So it includes 2D uh, uh, geometrical shapes, such as squares, circles, uh, uh, triangles, whatnot, then textual elements, then image manipulations, then we have transformational actions, such as scaling, rotating, and uh, skew, and all that stuff and of course to the animations. Now, along with that, we'll jump right into Xamarin Forms. What are, well, how about Xamarin Forms and 2D graphics here, right? Now, right here, I'm not gonna get into the uh, in intro to Xamarin Forms or whatnot. I'm going to assume most of you are aware. So, but just to set a common ground, let me give a very short intro to Xamarin Forms, right? Xamarin Forms is this common abstraction layer that sits on top of a native uh, Xamarin Android, Xamarin iOS, Windows Phone, UWP, and so on. So Xamarin Forms is this uh, common abstraction layer that abstracts the common properties and behaviors of those native frameworks. So you can do all of your UI code, business code, everything in one single shared PCL project. And you don't have to do any single native line of code you can directly uh, deploy to all the native platforms. So that's Xamarin Forms. And when, it, when we talk about Xamarin Forms and 2D graphics, there's actually uh, quite, a, not, quite a set of nice basic animations that's built into Xamarin Forms. But they're, they're, you can do quite nice stuff with it, but they're pretty much very limited and basic. So you c it's, it's not really ideal or there, there's not much advanced support for animations and graphics with Xamarin Forms right out of the box. So you need the help of some third party library or framework for advanced animations or graphics with Xamarin Forms. So speaking of that, let's see what, what are the options we have out there. Some of the most commonly used ones, right? We have uh, Coco Shop that is specialized for 2D gaming re rendering. Uh, it's, I think it's built on top of Mono Games, so you can direct, now it's in the Coco Shops uh, to directly support Xamarin Forms. And uh, then we have Skia Shop, which we are going to talk today, uh, that is for vector graphics rendering. And then we have the OH Shop, that is for 3D uh, rendering, so we can do all kinds of uh, gaming and uh, physical, physics handling of those uh, rendering elements and so on. So. So that's what we have, but there's some more out there, and there's a lot of new uh, frameworks coming up for Xamarin Forms, direct support uh, for graphics. So just keep that in mind. Let's move on to the super awesome and easy to use Skia Sharp. Now, before Skia Sharp, there, there was the project Skia that was actually initiated by Google as an open source project. So thank you, Google. Now, it was built on C++, and this was a immediate uh, mode uh, 2D vector graphics rendering system. So you handle all the drawings on the canvas or the rendering by yourself manually, and there's very low memory usage and resource usage for that. So, uh, th this, so with that, you can do 2D graphic, all kinds of 2D graphics, uh, handling uh, and manipulating images on a 2D plane and textual elements, and a lot of cool stuff, guys. Because uh, Project Skia is already being used in a huge variety of Google's, uh, Google's uh, products out there. So it is really powerful, and there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with it. Now, what is Skia Sharp? So Skia Sharp is the .NET and C Sharp wrapper around the project Skia. So as you would have already expected, it's open source. So if any of you become an expert someday, you might uh, be able to come to contribute to it. So uh, that's a little bit intro or, uh, to the roots of project Skia Sharp. Um, along with that, let's dive into the actual Skia Sharp basics, right? Now, Skia Sharp was actually uh, initially developed for Xamarin native projects, Xamarin native Android, iOS, and so on. Uh, not until recently, they've introduced a support layer for Xamarin Forms. And with that, now you can do all of your 2D graphics coding in shared PCL, and you don't have to write any single line of native uh, code for handling graphics rendering with Skia Sharp. How cool is that, right? 
So now a skia sharp uh, right out of the box give you this S uh, canvas view that is called SK canvas view. This actually derives from the Xamarin Forms view. So you can use this component right out of the box just like you would do with any button or a layout or a label or anything, right? So just put it right there in your content page or your layout. And then uh, this, uh, speaking of this SK canvas view, it uh, brings you this uh, paint surface event that gets fired when the uh, page loads or the orientation changes, if there's any changes on the screen. So this event is where you'll be doing all your uh, 2D graphics rendering, uh, all the drawing functionality and everything, right? So uh, in only inside this event, you will be able to do the uh, 2D rendering, right? So what if you wanted to uh, manually do some rendering at, at the runtime? You, you can call the event surface method, which will fire up the paint surface event from the beginning, and you will be able to manually uh, do the rendering on demand. Now, uh, just keep that in mind for now, guys. Uh, now, uh, another cool thing about Skiashop is that uh, it allows you uh, usage of SVGs right out of the box. So that's a huge uh, like advantage when it comes to handling different resolution images and everything, uh, different resolution devices. Now, it also uh, includes a huge set of uh, image manipulation functionality out of the box. Now, uh, I'm going to speak a little bit about this SK Canvas view, right? Now, as we all know, uh, almost every graphics rendering framework, they have a canvas that, is, that you're going to do the drawing or the rendering uh, your uh, 2D or 3D elements on, right? Just like that, Skiashop has a canvas that is called SK Canvas. So that SK Canvas view that we spoke of earlier is actually the, the placeholder for the actual uh, Skiashop canvas, which is SK Canvas. So SK Canvas, this, ins this uh, object right here is where you are going to do the actual drawing of on the surface. So uh, you, when you remember that event that I talked about earlier that fires up uh, when, you, when the uh, page loads, pay a paint surface event, this one, this, that event passes a reference to this SK Canvas, and then from there you can get that instance and do the necessary drawing that you want. Now, that being said, I, I know this is quite a lot to like uh, sink in, but just bear with me, guys. We'll, we'll uh, go through a demo, and uh, uh, you'll, you'll step by step, you'll figure out uh, everything that we just discussed. So, without further waiting, let's get into the actual cool stuff that is the uh, we'll uh, look into the installation of Skia Shop in your Xamarin Forms PCL project and then add the can SK Canvas view we just talked about now and then handle the paint surface event and then do some basic initialization of the SK Canvas. All right, uh, here we go. Let me fire up my Visual Studio. All right, okay. All right, so what we are going to do, we are going to create a new project, a new Xamarin Forms project. Oh boy, that is too slow. <laughs> Awkwardly waiting until Visual Studio finishes his whatever the task <laughs> is doing on the background. Ah, oh, come on. Seriously, right? Like, give me the templates. Okay. Wow. It's taking a long time. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's uh, browse the location. I just, I'm just going to put this in the desktop. Oh, monkey fest. Yay. Cool. Demo zero. Whoop. Let's call it. Oh. CL.
So just just uh, while whatever it's doing finishes, it ha have any of you guys done any graphics uh, programming or graphical rendering programming or anything, animations rendering? Yeah? Oh, nice. Cool, we've got some hands up here. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, here we go. That is good. So what we just created is a Xamarin Forms project. So to add Skia Shop to your project, what you need to do is go to the NuGet manager. NuGet package solution. There we go. Chop, chop. Okay. We're going to search for Skia Sharp. Skia Shop. Now, this right here, this Skia Shop is for Xamarin native projects. But if you want the Xamarin Forms project, you have the Skia Shop, Shop.views.forms. This is for uh, Xamarin Forms. So we are going to install that to all the uh, platform projects and the PCL. All right. Okay, here we go. Oof. Okay, it's done. So what we're going to do is we're going to here and let's add the SK canvas wave. Canvas view and oh, we need the reference. Uh oh, I don't have a free shopper, so I'm just gonna get the reference from there. I'm too bored. So, what we're doing here is we are, we are adding the SK canvas view we just talked about earlier, uh, but unfortunately, I don't have a free shopper installed, so I'm too bored to <laughs> remember the reference path. So, I'm just gonna get it from my other project. Hold on. Here we go. All right. Skia Shop. We'll start forms. So we add the reference to the SAML right here. Oh, sorry. It's not. Oh. Come on. Okay. Here we go. And um, probably I need to rebuild the solution to IntelliSense to load up. Okay, finally, there you go. Let's get this gear shop. Okay, so unfortunately, my IntelliSense is not firing up. So <laughs> I'm going to get the uh, paint surface event handler manually copied up here. And uh, let me get the method definition from here. All right, so what we just did is, guys, we just uh, subscribed to the uh, X name. Let's call it the SK Canvas Canvas Wave. Cool. So as you can see, this is a paint surface event. We subscribe to it. Let's create the event handler on the code behind. All right, we are good to go. 
let me add the references here using Skillshop views.salmon forms. All right, so this is the paint on paint surface event handler. So here what we get is the SK paint surface event args, right? So this uh, event args has some pretty useful uh, uh, object references, right? So we have the e.info, that is the SK image info that, that which contains all the data about your uh, canvas and its height, width, and so on, all that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a reference to it, e.info. Let's call it the uh, whoops, uh, SK image info. And take that. So, okay. And then we have another important reference here. Oh, whoops, what am I missing? Okay. Or dot. Okay. E dot surface dot canvas so this is the actual sk canvas that we talked about the reference to the actual canvas that is inside the view so let's call it the sk canvas friends sk canvas all right so what we do here is we are going to paint the uh, canvas with red so you can directly call the method called clear and pass in a color object that will paint the uh, the whole canvas with the given color. So let's do that. SK colors. Um, why, why, why? Come on. Missing reference. Yep. Here we go. SK colors. Corn, flower, blue. Why not? Yeah, sure. Here we go. So what we just did is that uh, we got a reference of the SK canvas that we just talked earlier, and then we we are, we, are draw, we are painting the whole canvas with the corn flower blue color and. Uh, right here in the SK image info object that you, that you see here, the instance there, you can get the actual the width of the canvas, like and then the you can uh, let me just uh, for the sake of it uh, get that those instance uh, with uh, canvas width, canvas width, and dot. Let's get the canvas height as well. Height, okay. Here we go. So let's just check. And let's debug and see if we get the actual uh, actual info of the SK canvas or not. So CCD uh, does not exist in seven four. What is the SK canvas with? What is it? Uh, something in the SK canvas with. All oh, right, right. I know, I know what it is. I have. The forms I need the uh, yep namespace always misses that. Here we go. Let's do all cool. Sorry about the waiting, guys. Building a project from scratch it always takes time in Visual Studio, you know, especially when you're running in a laptop like it's four or five years old. So, here we go. <laughs> Let me restart my Android simulator. All right. Come on. Right up. Okay. is loaded up, it's deploying, come on, okay,
Yes, sure. Uh, Go on. Must have been a, a native uh, Android uh, Canvas uh, widget. Is it correct? Yeah. The, the, there's many ways you can do graphics in native Android. Yeah. But what's uh, the benefit uh, of this uh, SK Canvas? The pro in yeah. With uh, native Android. Native Android, right? So uh, the comparison is because, like, this is right here from directly from Skia, uh, Xamarin Forms. So you can do all the coding in P shared PCL and do uh, and deploy to Android, iOS, Windows Phone directly. So you don't have to do any native coding. So all the code that you do in the PCL, you don't have to do anywhere else. It's all in the PCL. You can directly deploy to native frameworks. But uh, who ported the uh, SK Canvas uh, to iOS? Uh, it's it's oh, oh, it's already done by the the project roots I just talk, talked about earlier. Yeah, it's project Skia. So okay, here we go. So we I just put a breakpoint here, guys. So you can see it has loaded the SK image info, uh, all the information about the canvas. So we have the width of seven six eight one one three six height, and let's see what we get. So cornflower blue. It has uh, painted the whole uh, canvas with the color that we have given. So that's how you initiate and do the uh, basic uh, uh, in setting up of Skia Sharp with Xamarin Forms right out of the box. So with that, let me close this down. Let's get back to the presentation. Now, next we are going to get into the actual graphics programming with Skia Sharp, right? Now, this is just an idea that I'm, just a thought that I'm going to put out there. So mathematics is actually the base of any kind of graphics rendering, right? Now, it doesn't matter whatever the framework that you use, it's all, it all comes down to mathematics. So when it comes to Skia Sharp even, uh, anything that you can uh, draw down on a piece of paper with, using with mathematics or geometry, you can do, always do the same thing on Skia Sharp right out of the box. So just putting it out there just to prove how cool Skia Sharp is. Now, uh, so speaking, getting into a little bit more in depth of Skia Sharp, it allows you to do a lot of cool transformational operations on the canvas. So you can do like um, rotate and uh, skew, scaling and all those kinds of cool stuff on the canvas uh, directly. And there's a really important object that, uh, that we would always use in Skia Sharp that is escape paint object. This paint object holds all the configuration for any of your drawing or rendering, right? Now, now just think of it in this way, right? If you, if you draw something on a piece of paper, you need a pad, a pencil, or a drawing, like a, a drawing brush, right? So in that brush, you have the width of the brush, the color that you're going to use to draw on that canvas physically, right? Just like that, all that, uh, the drawing co configuration of that drawing part, you will be storing in the escape paint object. So these objects are really lightweight and you'll be using them almost everywhere that you do any graphics rendering in Skia Sharp. So it has the properties such as the style of the brush or the path that you're drawing, the color, the stroke width, anti-alias properties, and so on. So just keep that in mind. And uh, oh, so this is something very cool, right? Now, right out of the box, Skia Sharp allows you to do uh, draw uh, these basic 2D geometrical shapes, right? So it has these default methods such as draw circle to draw circles, and draw rect to draw rectangles, and uh, draw lines, and so on. Right, so that but that doesn't mean Skia Sharp gives you a met, a functionality to, to draw every single geometrical shape there is. Uh, it only gives support, direct support for the basic uh, 2D shapes, right? Geometrical shapes. But if you want to draw any complex kind of uh, 2D uh, geometrical shape on the canvas, you need to use the object called Escape Path. So this escape path is very important. This is all. This is all you need to have in order to draw any kind of complex 2D drawing on the canvas. So this is actually a collection of contours. So it has these uh, really really cool uh, methods that you can call directly to do the drawing on the canvas, such as move to, which will move the given point from one one place to the other. Then you can call the line to, which will draw a line from that place, and then you have the arc to, which will draw an arc with the given configuration uh, right on the on the canvas, and so on. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with escape path. So. Uh, 
Oh yeah, all, all, all those mathematical geometry you can pass in the configuration with these methods and it will draw on the canvas right, right on demand. Yeah. Is that, is that clear? Cool. All right, let's move on. Uh, so with that, let's get into the demo and do some actual graphics programming, right? So what we're going to do here, we are going to configure some paint, escape paint objects and do some basic uh, 2D drawings on the canvas and le then let's do some translations and scaling, right? All right, here we go. I'm not going to create a uh, project from scratch. I'm going to load a project that I have already, uh, already configured with Skia Shop installed. So here we go. Load it up. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so just like what we had earlier, I, had, I have added a scale canvas view uh, to the content page, and then in the code behind, I have these, uh, I have these uh, in instant that uh, these, uh, sorry, <laughs> the instances for holding the SK canvas uh, instance and the SK image info to get the width and the height of the uh, canvas. So let's do some basic drawing, shall we? So for that, let's uh, define a escape paint object just like we talked about earlier. So let's use some clone or uh, escape paint. So new escape paint here. Escape paint and so, oh, sorry, escape paint. Let's set the color of the path to what red yeah why not sk colors dot not actually colors red okay and escape and oh man and then let's set the style of it to stroke so what it will do is it will draw something that is but hold on, let me ask a style to escape paint style to stroke. So what we are going to do is we are going to draw a, a simple circle. And with, when we set the style to stroke, what it will do is it will draw a circle that is not filled, I mean, unfilled circle. So, so yeah, escape paint. And then let's set the anti-alias properties to uh, true. So it will look more smoother. And so how we, here's how we are going to draw the uh, circle. We're going to get the reference of the canvas. Uh, and we are going to call the method that is draw circle. Do you see that when I, when I type draw, there's a lot of draw methods that's, that's attached to the canvas. Draw bitmap, draw, draw, draw circle, draw image. So there's all kinds of uh, really cool stuff that you can do. Uh, by default, so let's just uh, draw the circle. Uh, we are going to send, put it into the uh, zero and zero position. Then let's pass in a uh, radius, radius to 50, and we are going to pass the escape paint object that we just configured. All right. So I'm here. I'm using a using close here. So once the uh, yeah, uh, the once the execution finishes, the object will get. Uh, disposed so let's run this and see what happens <laughs> it's always awkward waiting for it to compile right <laughs> Oh man. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, just uh, shoot it uh, while it's uh, doing the thing, the compilation and whatnot. Oh, really? It's starting the emulator again. <laughs> that is horrible. Okay, let me. Wow. Okay, that was, that was unexpected. Come on. I shouldn't close it. Oh, 
Okay, that was fast. <coughs> oh, sorry guys, I, I just forgot to set, set up something that is the stroke width. Since we are not going to f uh, draw a circle that is filled, we need to set the uh, width of the stroke, which I forgot. I'm so sorry. Let's put it to like uh, 10, yeah. That should be good. Okay, let me just uh, real quick rebuild. Hmm? Could you just uh, place a breakpoint before you uh, that new line you just did, uh, and then uh, when uh, it uh, catch uh, the, that breakpoint, you just add a uh, new line after that and uh, continue. To run. Uh, where do you want me to put the breakpoint? Uh, you you added. Uh, the line number uh, 31. 31, yeah. What if you put a breakpoint uh, on the line 30? 30, uh, yeah. Then uh, uh, you wait until it uh, catch uh, or stop at the... At the breakpoint, yeah. Okay. And then you write uh, line uh, 31. Oh, we can't do that because it needs to be first compiled and then only it can run, right? Mm. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. This uh, compilation is quite slow. Okay, here we go. So, should appear now in any second. Ah, oh, taking so long time. Okay, so look what happened. So, <laughs> the, the circle is at the right, uh, okay, le left top corner, right? It's because the SK canvas is actually configured, the, pla the 2D plane of the SK canvas is configured for the zero and zero position to be on the left, right, left top corner. So what we are going to do here is, we are going to transform the canvas to, uh, to and bring that, uh, bring the zero and zero position of the canvas to the center. So we, what we are passing here is we are translating the whole canvas uh, by dividing the, uh, to, to the, uh, by dividing width and height to, from, by two. So it will bring the, it will transform the zero and zero, zero position to the center of the canvas. So let's do that. Then it will draw up pretty nicely. Okay. Come on. Cool. Oh, oh, it didn't compile. It actually did compile, but I, I'm supposed to be putting this up here. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, let's do that. Okay, here we go. Uh, we transform the uh, canvas uh, to bring to the center the starting points of X and Y. Okay, and what we'll ne do next is we are going to scale uh, scale down the canvas. Now you just saw earlier, uh, this is rendering actually according to the native uh, screen size, the circle right here. We gave it the uh, radius 50 and it's uh, uh, rendering according to the native resolution of uh, the running screen, right? So what we are going to do is, we are going to scale down the canvas so we can uh, get it to a, uh, wait, so let's get on to the factor of 200, something like that, so that'll, that'll look nicer. Um, let me just increase this to 15, okay. So what we just did is uh, call the scale transformation, which will tr uh, scale down the uh, the canvas uh, to the two, uh, to the by dividing the two by dividing the point of two hundred. So here we go. Now everything is scaled down to that down to the given value that we have here, two hundred. So it uh, displays quite nicely. So there we go. That's a basic uh, circle right here. Now with that. Let me real quick walk you guys through another cool um, uh, 2D <coughs> shape. Let's draw a simple uh, square. Cool. All right, here we go. So this is going to be a rectangle. 
And what I'm doing here is that I'm, I'm creating the SK paint object and I'm defining the SK rect object. This is where this allows you to define the size and the location of the rectangle that you are going to uh, draw. And then you're going to call the SK canvases draw rect method and pass in the rectangle and the paint configuration for it to draw. So let's see that, let's see how it gets rendered. All right. That was pretty fast. Okay, here we go. Now, just to show how easy it is for uh, to use KiaShop out of the box, you don't have to do any native rendering. Now, if I sh if I choose the UWP means the, and deploy it to my local machine, you can see how it runs with the same. Uh, hold on. Okay without having to do any native coding can deploy right into the native platform so here we go that is the android one running side by side let's wait for it to compile okay cool so this is running uwp and remember, we didn't do any native code. We're just doing everything on PCL. Come on. OK, there we go running on UWP right now. Cool. So without further ado, let me real quick get into the SK path that we just talked about earlier, right? To draw how to draw any kind of shape that you prefer with the use of SK path. Now what you're going to do, let me just <coughs> pull this up real quick. Uh, okay. So okay. So what we're doing here is we are just as usual, we are configuring a paint object. And we are we are instantiating SK path object, and we are what we are doing is we are calling these sub methods move to and line to uh, to with the given uh, you know the points x y points that we want to move our drawing path to. So first it will move to this given uh, location, and then it will create a line from that that place to this given location, and then then so on, and then at the end path.close, it will complete the whole drawing path from the beginning to the end of it. So let's see that in action. Android, it'll draw faster. So with the use of escape path, guys, you can draw any kind of shape that you want. And it's real easy. You just have to define whatever the uh, lo uh, locations that you want to draw on the canvas. So here we go. Uh, pretty simple, weird looking <laughs> uh, 2D uh, shape. So that's it. Okay, so with that, let's move on, guys. Now, um, I've actually written a quite comprehensive blog post about getting started with basic 2D shapes uh, with SkiaShop. So you might want to check that out if you're interested. It explains everything from beginning to circle to complex uh, 2D graphics. Uh, all right, then uh, let's go into user interactions. So this is where we'll be handling the touch events on the canvas when the user actually touch on the screen, uh, how we are going to handle that with SkiaShop. So, uh, now, SkiaShop uh, brings you this um, touch event handler in, for the canvas out of the box, and it, it's it's really good that it, it re it's really like powerful. It gives you the touch lo point location and the type of touch event that occurred, whether it's pressed or released or moved or anything, right? But if you want to do some kind of complex uh, touch manipulation on the screen, it is better if you use a uh, secondary uh, touch handler, such as if you want to handle uh, simultaneous touch points or do some special gesture recognition on the screen and so on. Um, 
Now, the way we handle uh, touches in Skia Sharp is that what we are going to do, we are going to uh, uh, subscribe to the touch event handler, and then we are going to get that location info and then push it back to the SK Canvas's paint surface event. We are going to forcefully redraw the canvas when the touch event happens so that we can uh, draw the uh, response on the canvas. So let's uh, get into the demo real quick and let's see how it works. All right, let's get to the demo too. Okay, so guys, uh, right here, I have the uh, my SK canvas in this in the content page, and I I have uh, subscribed to the uh, touch uh, event of the SK canvas. So it has SK canvas underscore touch event, and it it has a property called uh, enable touch event, which will give you uh, the touch event type that just occurred. So while enabling that, now right here we we are subscribing to it. And what we're going to do, we're going to get the location data, touch point location data, retrieve the location data, touch point location data inside the touch event handler. So you can see we have the uh, e.action type uh, that will tell you whether it's a pressed event or a moved event or whatnot. And then what we'll do is we'll restore it in a local uh, escape point. Uh, that represent x y position of the canvas the touch uh, location and then what we are going to do is we are going to forcefully redraw the canvas so inside the canvas we are going to retrieve this instance the touch point instance and we will redraw that location on the screen so the user gets the idea uh, user gets the feedback of the touch so let's do that so right here it's very simple we are basically creating a escape paint object, and with the given uh, with, the, with the capture touch point location, what we are we are pass we are creating we are drawing a circle on top of it, right? So let's do that. Let's check it out. Here we go. So this whole rendering process is all about uh, redrawing the canvas on demand, right? So as you can see, like here when the touch event occurs, I'm, I'm forcefully redrawing the uh, canvas, the, the uh, on-paint surface event. So there we will be handling the uh, drawing by ourselves manually as we wish. So, right, there we go. Taking so long. Okay, success. Here we go. Now, even whenever I touch on the phone surface, it will draw up the the location that we just touched. So there we go, handling touch events. So if, even if I move, it will keep redrawing the whole canvas. You see, even when I keep, keep on the touch and move around the canvas, it keeps on drawing. Because it doesn't matter how many times you draw, uh, forcefully draw on the canvas, since it's a rendering engine, it wouldn't have any effect on the performance. So yeah, there we go. Now with that, let's move on since we have some time constraints. Um, okay, so now bitmap image handling, right? So SK, uh, now SkiaSharp uh, allows you to uh, 
uh, do a lot of uh, image manipulation out of the box. So the way you load uh, images to be used with Skia Sharp in your Summer Informs project is you add them as embedded resources. So you add your images into your PCL and you set them as embedded resources and then you load uh, it uh, using uh, the assembly reference and uh, decode that object to escape bitmap. So this escape bitmap is the object that allows you to draw on the canvas and do all sorts of manipulation with Skia Sharp. So, and uh, the escape canvas also gives this draw bitmap method that you, you can directly pass in the escape bitmap uh, instance and it will draw on the canvas immediately. And uh, also, like I mentioned, uh, Skia Sharp gives you a lot of image filters, so uh, you can do all kinds of blurring, uh, changing color effects, and so on out of the box, which is pretty cool. So let's quickly get into the demo and see how it is done. So there we go. Whoops, sorry. OK. Let's load the demo three, handling images, boom. Don't need demo one. Let's close it down. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure, no worries. Uh, how is the order on which the objects are drawn decided? Yeah, it's 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 according to the how you uh, the order of where you are drawing the inside the paint um, event, right? So if you if you draw something at the at the beginning of the draw uh, event, it'll draw first and then the second and so on. So, so there's no z indexing out of the box, right? Sorry? There is no z indexing out of the box. No, 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 there's no z indexing, yeah. Because it's it's a vector graphics rendering canvas, right? So you don't get the z index actually. So it just it's a it just draws whatever you gives into the canvas, right? Okay, so it's just overdraw. Exactly, yeah, yeah. All right. Here we go. So, as you can see, I have added an image, really cute uh, Samarin monkey here, and I've added it as an embedded resource, uh, as you can see in the build action. So, what I'm going to do, uh, I have the uh, SK Canvas set up in the SAMO, just like earlier, you just saw, and uh, I have uh, translated the whole canvas and set, it, set up the proper scale to it. And then, what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw the bitmap. Actually, I'm going to load the bitmap first. Let's do that. So as you can see, I'm loading the image here uh, as, as an assembly resource, and then getting the uh, and then I get the stream object of it, and then I decode it to the SK bitmap type. As you can see, using the SK manage stream and convert that to uh, and decode it to uh, the SK bitmap object. So with this SK bitmap, what I can do is I can directly draw on the SK canvas. So let's do that. SK canvas dot draw bitmap. Here we go. And right here, you can give the width and the height and everything. I'm just going to from here because I'm too lazy. <laughs> All right. Okay, so what I'm creating here is I'm creating a SK rectangle which will define the, uh, the, the drawing points of the, um, of the image and the width and the height that I need, want it to draw as. So then let's see how it goes. Here we go. And as you can see in the, as the third parameter, I'm passing a null, right? So that the point is that, as you can see in the method definition, there, there's a paint object that you can send into it, which, which you can add some, any, uh, some kind of color configuration that you want to draw along with the image that will blend in together. So it, you can also do that uh, pretty easily, change the colors and stuff. Well, let's see how this one goes. That's been doing that. Let me get the, uh, the image. Okay, cool. <laughs> Come on. All right, finally deployed. 
let's see it in action. Here we go. So it's drawing the uh, image on the canvas with the given configuration. Let me real quick uh, show you some uh, image manipulation that you can do right out of the box, right? So this is here we are adding the blur image filter that is built into uh, SkiaShop. So we have this uh, uh, this escape paint object that we are setting a image filter as the uh, create by creating a blur instance uh, of it. So Let's see how that one gets rendered. So you can create the blur with the uh, given. Oh, sorry. So see. All right. Good to go. All right. There we go. A blurred image. <laughs> A blurred monkey. So. Let's move on to our next section. So just keep in mind guys, there's a lot of like uh, image manipulation and uh, filtering that you can use right out of the box. So, and then here we comes to the coolest stuff of all, the animations rendering. But now right here, guys, I have some bad news for you. SkiaShop does not support any animations at, at rendering at all. But that, that, that being said, uh, it doesn't mean you can't do or it's impossible. What you, but instead, what you need to do is you have to handle the drawing manually uh, by yourself and draw every single, uh, anim uh, every single frame of the animation by yourself. Uh, that might sound quite complex, but it's really not because since it's a rendering framework, you can repaint the canvas any time, any number of times you want for a second, so it doesn't really affect the performance. So let's get into the actual action and see how to do an animation right here. So let's open up the demo. Since we are running out of time, I'm going to speed up a little bit, guys. Okay. Uh. Is there a font uh, and glyphs uh, manipulation uh, method uh, in here? Sorry? Uh, is there uh, font, the fonts? Font, maybe. you mean like dra drawing text? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can draw any kind of custom fonts and custom uh, text on the canvas uh, yeah, pretty easily. You just have to add the font file that you want to use and then it'll use that, uh, yeah. Okay, so, okay. so what, what we need to do is to draw uh, 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 an animation manually, we, we need to have some kind of a, uh, uh, like a functionality to create a uh, pulse action, right? The, something like a timer that will keep on uh, painting the uh, canvas. Uh, so what we are using here is we are using a device that start timer which will uh, create a timer and we are using a stopwatch object to uh, calculate a given uh, T value which we are going to use as a uh, value to draw a circle on the screen. So here it's like creating a pulse every uh, 33 milliseconds and uh, yeah so as you can see we are we are, we are painting a escape paint uh, uh, a circle we're painting a circle and we are setting we are changing its radius according to the calculated t value here based on the timer right so real quick let's take a look at that and, I'm, and even for this, I'm not using any native code at all. Uh, it's just the basic uh, SKI shop canvas view. Just a matter of creating a timer and redrawing the canvas as we wish, as we go on. So, all right. So here we go. We're painting a circle right here. And because of the timer that we have, it keeps on re repainting the canvas with the given radius, the calculated radius here, as you can see. So it keeps on uh, animating as we wish. So this is something really basic kind of an, an animation, but you can do a lot, of, lot more complex animations out of the box. It's just a matter of creating a timer and handling the every single rendering cycle by yourself manually. So once you get comfortable, it's quite straightforward. Now, there we go, animations with Skia Shop. 
Now, uh, let me get back to the uh, presentation actually. Uh, so, if you're interested or if you're like really keen on uh, learning more of Skia Shop and all the cool stuff that you can do with it, you can check out the uh, official documentation by Samarin. Uh, since it's directly supported by Samarin, you can check out there and you can uh, check their GitHub uh, samples repo. Uh, which has a lot of like uh, demos of how you can use Kia Sharp and so on. If you go there, you might find a lot of example and sample code, but they're quite boring. That is true, I just said it, it's quite boring. If you want to find the actual cool stuff, check out my blog, yeah. <laughs> or check out my GitHub where I have a lot of cool, I've done a lot of cool stuff with Kia Sharp, uh, which are going to be pretty handy. And you might find stuff like this right here. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. So this, this is, this is, this, all of these are done using Skia Shop right out of the box. There's no single line of native code at all. So look at that. And also, this is something I've been working on recently. I'm actually building a uh, atom um, simulator, atom structure simulator uh, animation using Skiashop, trying to push the boundaries of the framework. And also, some, sometimes you might find funky stuff like this, which I developed a few days ago when I was having some insomnia, I couldn't sleep. So yeah, <laughs> there you go, guys. Uh, well, you know, we're developers, that's what we do. Um, yeah, so, uh, so what are you guys waiting? Just get out there and build something cool with Skia Shop and Samarin Forms. And of course, enjoy. And also, guys, uh, thank you so much for attending my session. I truly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, there you go. And enjoy the rest of Monkey Fest 2017. Also, don't forget to enjoy your tea break. <laughs> there you go.